Okay, so let's work on the uh, chapter 15. Let's see, chapter 15. <clears throat> Okay, can you see chapter 15? Yep. yep. Okay. So chapter 15 is about the period cost uh, application. So we've been spending a lot of time dealing with manufacturing costs, right? Uh, product cost. Uh, so this chapter is about the period cost, non-manufacturing cost, okay? So we want to understand how we're going to allocate period cost, okay? How are we going to allocate the period cost? And uh, so there are some alternative cost method, a single versus dual read cost method. We're going to talk about this too. And we're going to also use, there are three different methods, direct step down, sorry, this is a type of step down, and the reciprocal methods to allocate supporting division cost to productive divisions, okay? So uh, the last one, we talk about common cost, okay, common cost. So there are four possible reasons to allocate period cost appropriately, okay? So why do we need to make sure that this period cost are allocated appropriately? So first, if you want to have a better information, uh, you, you want to use the information for better business decision, right? So the, the information, if it's more, it's better, then you're going to make a better decision, right? And also uh, you want to motivate your managers and employees, right? If, if the cost is allocated improperly, right? So then, it will be very demotivating, right? As a manager, I know I am running my business really well, right? Everything is under control. I have a good control of cost, but guess what? You allocate a big chunk of like the main cost on my section, right? Which is unfair, right? If it's, if it's inaccurate allocation, then I will be very upset, right? Because it's gonna affect my performance. Um, it's gonna make my, you know, division look bad or whatever. Oh, it's just because it's not fair. It can be demotivating, right? Uh, third, uh, justify either costs or reimbursement internally or externally, right? So uh, basically, you know, uh, when you are, okay, allocating the limited resources of the corporation, right? Um, there are different departments. They are fighting for these limited resources, right? So if you have findings, who are you going to give, right? Right. So that's that's the thing, right? So based on accurate costing information, right, you are able to allocate the funding appropriately, right? So that would be the justifi justification. And also uh, the accounting standards, right? ISBR efforts, um, they have requirement. Right, in terms of the expenses allocation, you want to make sure those are complied, right? Those are complied. So that's the four possible reasons why this is important. Uh, the four criteria, okay, the allocation has to be following like a causal relationship, right? Um, it's unfair to charge a division uh, on the cost that they are not responsible for, right? So it has to be a causal, uh, cause effect link there. Right. And the benefit received, right? It's ridiculous, um, you know, if you charge a cost on my division, but I don't get any benefit, right? <laughs> so it, when you impose a cost, okay, to the division, make sure, you know, that the, the division really received the corresponding um, benefit. So one example would be, so suppose some of the uh, accounting partnership, right? So the partnership is usually maybe have two uh, CPA partners together, they work together, right? So how would they allocate their cost, right? So they share the same building, right? They pay the rent together and they probably share the same uh, admin people, the, the person who pick up the phone, the salary, right? So they share a lot of things, right? So then how are they gonna allocate the cost? Because eventually they had to figure out how much money they make, right? So 
basically one way would be depending on the, their revenue, right? The revenue generating, okay? If one person generate $1 million, the other one gen generate $2 million, right? So the cost allocation makes sense if it's one versus two, right? Ratio based on the revenue generating, right? You see what I mean? So basically the cost allocation has to corresponding to the benefit received. You receive the more revenue, you probably should bear more cost, right? And the fairness or equity, right? So, you know, is it fair in that cost allocation? Ability to bear, right? Um, so if, if this unit does not generate a lot of revenue, right? It's a cost center, you allocate substantial amount of cost to them, right? They probably cannot afford it, right? So those are the four criteria. When you are making decision, how to allocate the cost across different divisions. So, so um, in an organization, they may have a supporting department, okay? So they provide a service assisting other department in the company. You also have operating production uh, department. So these are the uh, section directly working uh, with the customers and the, right, they are providing, per, they are making product or providing service. So the single read method. So, um, so you only figured out one single read based on the total cost. So you figured out the total cost, okay, to be allocated. And you have a base right, you have labor hours, whatever, you have seen a lot of those. You have a base and then you use a division, you figure out a single read and you just use that single read to allocate. So dual read, so you have two numbers, right? One is based on fixed cost, okay? So instead of using one big pool of the total cost, so you have, you separate the total cost into two smaller pools. One is the fixed cost pool, the other one is a variable cost pool. And then, then you figure out the fixed cost read and the variable cost read. So now you have two reads. So you're gonna use the two reads to allocate the cost. Okay, that's the difference. Single read versus two reads, dual reads, okay? So in this uh, example, uh, the total cost is 5.4 million a year. Uh, the variable component is 2.4. The fixed component is three. So 3 million plus 2.4 million add up to this uh, 5.4 million, okay? So what about the base for allocation? So we are using the capacity, right? So the capacity available is what 12,000 IT hours, okay? Um, so to uh, see the details, so they have two, division, one is the notebook division. So they are going to use the capacity two thirds. Um, so 8,000 IT hours. The, the other division is gonna use one third, 4,000 IT hours together. That's how this capacity is allocated. So this is the budget. This is, they are thinking um, how this capacity will be used. Okay, 8,000 hours for the uh, notebook division, 4,000 hours for the other division. Okay, so then when you figure out the unit cost per, per hour, we are trying to get a rate, okay? So the rate would be for the fixed cost, total fixed cost is 3 million divided by total capacity 12,000. So that would be 250 per IT hour for the fixed cost. For the variable cost, total variable cost is uh, 2.4 million divided by capacity 12,000. So 200 per IT hour. So together, these two together, that is 450, right? So for each IT hour, the cost is 450 and the fixed component is 250 and the other 200 is the variable component, okay? So now these are the actual number. So the actual number is the notebook division actually used 9,000, used more hours than budget. So notebook divisions used 9,000 IT hours. So the other division only uses 3,000 IT hours. So how are we gonna allocate this? Okay, this cost, 
5.4 million. How, how we are going to allocate this to these two divisions? Well, let's use single rate. So when we use a single rate, can anyone tell me what is the single rate number? Four fifty. Yeah, that's the total cost per unit, right? Four fifty. So that's easy. So let's take a look. Single rate. Um, they use four fifty per labor hour, so per IT hour times nine thousand used by the notebook, three thousand used by the other division. So that's how you allocate these two numbers. Okay, pretty straightforward, right? They add up to be the total cost. Uh, 5.4 million, single rate, yeah? Okay, now what about the, what about the uh, dual rate? So for the dual rate, the notebook decision for the fixed cost, they use the budgeted level, which is 8,000 hours times fixed cost per unit, that's the 250. For the variable cost, they use the actual 9,000 times the variable cost per unit, 200. So this one is the, the fixed component is 2 million. The variable component is 1.8. So together is 3.8 for notebook. For the other division, the part is 4,000 times 250, this is 1 million. And the variable is used actual 3,000 times 200. So the 6 million, so this is 1.6 together, that's the total 5.4, okay? So you may have a question, why uh, for fixed cost, they are using the budgeted number? For the variable, they are using actual, right? For the variable, they are using actual, we understand, right? But for the fixed, why they use the budget? Does anyone know? Why they're using the budget 8,000, not 9,000? Uh, the fix should have been calculated based off the budget or it's like always static. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Reen. That shows that you are being able to connect this information to the previous knowledge, right? So the fixed cost is often budgeted, right? So they are already on a static budget, okay? So therefore, uh, the fixed cost allocated, the fixed cost uh, budgeted for each division, that was already on the static budget, okay? So therefore, it's, it's more appropriate to follow the static budget fixed cost, right? So that would be the, Budgeted 8,000 times 250, okay? So do we have any question on the single rate versus dual rate? If you understand everything, give me a sum up, please. Okay, um, so if you, for the sake of time, um, I have to keep going. So let me know if you don't understand, okay? Okay, now I'm going to talk about the methods of allocating support cost to production department, okay? So you have the supporting department, they incur the cost, right? They have to be allocated to the production department. So there are three approach, direct, step down, uh, receive pros, protocol, okay? So first one, let's use this example. This is E15-20. Okay, so basically, okay, basically, um, just in short, we are saying, um, so they have support, support uh, department, okay? So this support department has, has one is called admin service, AES, and also information system, okay? So there are two services. One is from the um, admin services, 
and the other one is for the information system service. Okay, and for the operating department, okay, uh, there are two operating department. One is called a government consulting. The other one is the corporate consulting. Okay, so these are the operating department, and these two are the service department. Okay, uh, for the admin service, uh, 60, 100,000. 600,000, that's the total budget cost, okay? For the information system, that's 2.4 million, okay? So in total, this is $3 million, okay? So the whole idea is how I'm going to allocate this $3 million, okay, to the operating department, to government, uh, and corporate. How I'm gonna allocate the total three million to these two? That's basically what, I, what the question is, okay? And the support work supplied by AIs. So the AIs, okay, how they, uh, how they use their time, right? They use 25% time to support information system, 40% of time to support the government, operating and the 35% time to support corporate. So this percentage adds up to be 100%, right? So this is the AIS uh, service team. For the IIS service team, okay? So they spend 10% of their time on AIS, 30% uh, of their time on government, and 60% of time on the corporate. Okay, so how are we gonna figure this out? Allocate, so the whole idea is we want to allocate the total support cost, which is 600 plus, uh, 600,000 plus 2.4 million, total $3 million. How we are going to allocate this $3 million to these two operating departments? So the first method is called direct method. This is the most widely used method. Okay, so you allocate the cost directly to the operating department. It's very simple. I'm going to show you. How are we going to do this? Okay, so basically, you are saying, okay, so for the, the $600,000, the AIS cost, um, so I'm going to allocate this directly to government and corporate based on this time they are using. So they are using 40 for garment, uh, 35 for COP. So in total, they are using 75, right? So I want to recalculate the, the relative proportion uh, between these two components. So I use the 40 divided by 75. So that's the proportion for the garment. I use 35 divided by 75. That's the proportion for the corporate. And so I multiply these proportions using the cost by the AIs. So then I figured out 320 for government, 280 for corporate. Similar idea, similar idea. I'm going to use here 30. So for the IIs, okay, for the IIs. So 30, 60 together, that's 90, okay? So I'm going to allocate 30 out of 90 to government, 60 out of 90 to corporate, okay? So in total, this is 2.4 million. Uh, a third is 800. This is two thirds, that's the 1.6 million. So when, they, when I add this two up, I get this allocation. 1.12 million for government, 1.88 for corporate. These two together, that's a $3 million. So this is my direct method. Do we have any question on this? If you understand this, please sum up. Okay, very good. That's much better. Okay, so this is a direct method. So now let's take a look at the step down method. Okay, so step down method, basically um, other than the 
operating department, you also take into consideration of the service provided by each other, by the two service department, okay? So first you have to rank, right? You have to rank the sequence order, okay? Step down method, which service department go first? Which, which, which service department, you, the cost you are going to allocate first? Okay, so you're gonna have a, a rank in terms of the priority of the order of allocation. Okay, you always allocate the rank, the higher rank with the preference, right? So this is a, a, a pretty simple uh, way to do the method. So let's take a look. So let's use the step down method instead. And the rank order is, I will go with AIS first, IIS last. Okay, I will allocate this one first. Okay, so to allocate this one, that's easy, right? So I know the total cost is 600,000. And I know this percentage, right? The red color, 25, 40, 35. So I just use this percentage. I'm gonna allocate into the, the three other component, the other uh, uh, units. So 600K, 25%. 150, 150,000 and uh, 250, 240 to government, 210 to the corporate, okay? So now you first allocate, after this allocation, your information system received additional 150,000. So now the total cost to be allocated by IIS will be 1.4 plus 150,000. So now it's 2.55 million cost. So now you are going to allocate this, okay? You are going to allocate this uh, to government and corporate using 60 over 90, 30 over 90, 60 over 90, just like the direct approach, okay? So now after this allocation, you add them up. So your government get 1.09 million, your corporate get 1.91 million. So together it's a three, it's a three, three million, still the three million dollar total. Okay, so just give me one second. Um, does anyone, if this makes sense, please give me some up. Okay, so good. So if you don't know, you, if it doesn't make sense, make sure let me know, okay? So that's the AIs first. Now let's take a look at what about the IIs first? So if you are still use, use step down method, IIs first. So again, what is IIs? IIs, the cost to be allocated is 2.4 million, right? How are you going to allocate it? You are allocating it using the green colors, 10% AIS, 30 government, 60 to corporate. So now um, 2.4 million times 10%. So AIS get additional 240,000 and the 720,000 for government, 1.44 million for corporate. And now you are going to allocate AIS. AIS was 600,000 K, but received additional 240,000. So now the new number, the cost to be allocated is 840,000. So when you allocate this, you allocate it just like the direct approach. So 40 over 75, 35 over 75. So you will figure out that number. So when you add them up, so it turned out to garment to be 1.168. Corporate 1.832. When you add these two numbers up, it's still three million. Does this make sense? If it makes sense, give me a sum up, please. Okay, good, very good. Okay, now I'm going to deal with the last method, recipe proco. Method. Okay. 
So in this one, um, so basically they recognize the, the mutual relationship, right? They, they are serving each other, okay? So can you possibly figure out the exact cost, okay, for each service department after considering this mutual interaction? Um, you, you can do that. You are using simultaneous, simultaneous equation, okay? Um, so you are able to figure it out. So for example, here, so I want, you, this is probably you learned this in the junior high, right? So let's say the cost for AIS that equals uh, 600,000 plus 10% of AIS, right? AIS 10%. And AIS equals 2.4 million plus 25% of AIS. So you set up this equation. There are two equations, two variables. You can solve them, right? So back to probably junior high. Is that junior high? I don't know. I learned this in junior high, okay? So you have two equations, two variables. You are able to solve this. So you are able to solve exactly what is AIS, what is IIS, okay? And then you use the direct approach, right? To figure out how much to allocate. So this approach is very, very precise, right? This is the most precise approach. Okay, so I introduced you all the three in my third. So does anyone have any question? Can I move on? Okay, good, so let's move on. I only have just a little bit left and then we can talk about the final exam. Uh, allocating common cost. Okay, so several entities share some kind of a common, right? A common cost pool, right? How are you gonna allocate that common cost pool to the different entities? Um, so there are methods, one is called a standalone method. The other one is called the incremental cost method. Okay, so what is the standalone method? So this is the example I give to you, okay? Suppose um, if A entity by itself, the cost will be 80, B by itself, will, the cost will be 10, C, uh, the cost will be 10, right? So the total, if they all on their own, will be 100. But when they do this together, there are maybe some kind of cost saving, right? It's just like, if I do uh, a accounting business by myself, I have to rent a place. If uh, another person, another guy, he has to rent another place, right? But if we work together, we only need to rent one place. So the common cost is saved, right? Like there's some savings. So suppose the common cost when A, B, C together is 95 is less than the standalone, right? So the standalone approach is that you want to figure out the proportion based on the standalone cost, okay? So for A, the proportion is 80 divided by the total standalone, 100. So for A, that's 80%. For B, that would be 10%. For C, it would be 10%. So then you apply the common cost um, to these proportions to figure out how many costs to be allocated to each unit. So the, the, the result is $76 to A, $9.50 to B and C. When you add these numbers together, that's equals 95. Does this make sense? So if it makes sense, give me a sum up, please. Okay, good. So now let's take a look at uh, the incremental cost allocation method. So again, let's see standalone cost is 80, 10, and 10 for ABC, total is 100. So suppose 
Um, if two users, if A and B together, the common cost will be 89, okay? Uh, suppose A, B, C together, the common cost will be 95, okay? And now I have to rank the order, okay? So I first have to rank the order A, B, C. So I'm going to assign the cost based on the ranking order. So suppose the rank order is A, B, C, with A have the preference. So um, now I have A, okay, I'm going to assign the $80, okay? Because that's basically how much the common cost would be for A if it's by itself. Uh, now let's add B, okay? If it's A and B together with two users, the common cost will be 89, okay? Because we have already assigned 80 to A, so therefore we are going to assign $9 to B, okay? And now let's move on to C. We have three users, okay? With three users, the common cost is 95. We have already assigned 89 to A and B. So the difference is $6 to be assigned by C. This is called incremental cost allocation method. Okay, so does this make sense? If yes, give me a thumb up. Okay, good, very good. I don't know if it's because you are pretty smart or it's me giving you a very good example. So it's either way. Uh, okay, so okay, so that's that's it for chapter fifteen. So I'm going to okay, well, we are doing okay with time. Okay, so I'm going to uh, post this.